بالاضافه الى زيارتي خلال ست اشهر الماضيه الى سلوفينيا لاستمرار دفع قدما العلاقات الثنائيه القويه التي تربط بين البلدين. مصر كانت اول دوله عربيه وافريقيه تعترف بدوله سلوفينيا عندما استقلت واقامت تمثيل دبلوماسي دبلوماسي ونعمل على توثيق العلاقات في النطاق السياسي والاقتصادي والثقافي عقدنا خلال زيارتي لسلوفينيا الجولة الثانية للجنة الاقتصادية المشتركة ووضعنا عدد من الاتفاقيات فيما بين البلدين في مجالات مختلفة للتفاوض وان شاء الله اتفقنا على تسريع المفاوضات حولها حتى يتم توقيعها خلال لقاء اخر يجمعنا الحقيقه بثمن كثيرا مواقف سلوفينيا المبدئيه ازاء القضايا في المنطقه issues in the arab region especially towards the palestinian cause and the israeli war against gaza slovenia took initial uh, positions that are in line with the uh, principles of the international law and the uh, humanitarian principles. It was one of the first countries to call for ceasefire and to take procedures to protect civilians and the entrance of AIDS. They also refused the issue of displacement of the Palestinian people. They take these positions either in the framework of the European Union or in the framework of Slovenian membership in the Security Council. They voted for the resolutions of the UN General Assembly and they also voted in the Security Council to accept Palestine as a full member in the United Nations. I'd like to appreciate these situations and positions. They are based on a ground of principles that gather both of us and enhances the relationships between both of us. We tackled in our uh, discussions all the aspects of the bilateral relationships and the issues that are regional and international and of mutual interest. Of course, most of the deliberations focused on the situation in Gaza and the military intervention in Rafah that both countries refuse for its potential consequences and great harms against the civilians. We also discussed the importance of ceasefire and exchange of hostage. Despite the previous negotiations around did not result in this, it's still important to reach a ceasefire and exchange of hostages so we can contain this crisis and its consequences that are expanded in this region either towards the Red Sea or the military operations between Israel and Iran. All of these things are dangerous and have negative impacts on the stability and security in the region. We also discussed the Russian-Ukrainian crisis and how to handle it on basis of principles that are related to UN Charter. We mentioned that it's necessary to follow up this matter and all, and all the countries should exert all the necessary efforts to stop the war and reach a peaceful reconciliation for this conflict. Once again, I'd like to welcome the minister and I'm really happy with her visit. She's a dear friend and we're looking forward for the upcoming opportunities for working together. Thank you. Shukran Gazilan. Shukran Gazilan. Ana yasuruni an akuna huna fi al-Qahira. Thank you very much, dear Sameh. I'm pleased to be here in Cairo for the second time since the start of the horrific war in Gaza, again with my friend Minister Shukri. I'm also pleased that we have these regular conversations and that you also visited Slovenia recently. Slovenia particularly appreciates the role of Egypt in addressing the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. I visited yesterday Egyptian Red Crescent in Al Arish and went to of Rafa border crossing where it's uh, very shocking to see that the border crossing is closed for today fifth day in a row. 
I can see or say you are doing extraordinary job for people suffering in Gaza. Hunger and starvation as means of war are unacceptable. It's of utmost importance that Israel allows humanitarian routes to reopen and ensure that food, medicine and other life-saving necessities reach the people of Gaza. A use of famine, a use of starvation as a weapon of war is more than a shame. Slovenia supports the vital role of UNRWA in providing humanitarian aid and we urge all parties to support UNRWA's continued operation and to respect its neutrality and humanitarian mission. Since the 7th of October last year, Slovenia has significantly increased humanitarian aid funding for Gaza. Almost 2 million euro were distributed to UNRWA, also a World Food Program and ICRC. And in this year, we have so far allocated half a million euro to UNRWA. We have also provided two shipments of in-kind aid to Gaza. In February and April this year, we are also considering now the new additional request from Egyptian partners to allocate additional humanitarian assistance. A contingency plan for the delivery of the humanitarian aid is needed. Israel is not only violating fundamental moral norms, but also international law. And Slovenia, as the Minister mentioned, repeatedly called for immediate ceasefire. We saw violations of humanitarian law, violations of human rights law in Gaza, with killings almost 35,000 innocent civilians among many children and women. We see forced displacement of people. Today in Rafah, the military operation is continuing and we see another forced displacement and evacuation of innocent civilians and these are violations under international humanitarian law. More than one million people are at risk of hunger and forced eviction and we are strongly against the Israeli plan for displacement Palestinians and for current military operation in Rafah. We strongly condemn it and we repeatedly call for Israelis to don't go ahead. So don't do it. Israel must also stop the settlement expansion and uh, legislation prevent settler violence, evictions and forced transfers and ensure the perpetrators are held accountable, settlements are illegal under the international law. I am shocked that 103 journalists as of these days, this is a report of Reporters Without Borders, have lost life for their work in the past five months, more than 100 journalists reporting on what is happening in Gaza and new journalists are moving out of Rafa. It is absolutely unacceptable. Slovenia opposed planned Israeli attack on Rafa and urged Israel to refrain from executing and we are disappointed that Israel decided to start this operation and urging Israel to stop it immediately. We consistently call for a ceasefire and the initiation of peace talks. This call is even more critical now as we must prevent the conflict from spilling over in the region and Slovenia is disappointed because the negotiations between Israel and Hamas has not moved further, moreover stopped. I encourage Egypt and Qatar to proceed with its active role as mediators and I do hope soon further negotiations and in their efforts to achieve a sustainable peace will continue. Just um, the ultimate goal, you know that the Slovenian government these days launched a procedure for recognition of Palestine and uh, the ultimate goal must be a lasting two-state solution with peaceful coexistence between Israelis and Palestinians. We did an important step, irreversible step this week in Ljubljana um, in the process of recognizing Palestine. Previous Thursday we launched procedures for Palestine's recognition and we want the recognition of Palestine to serve as an additional lever for pressure 
to end the fighting in Gaza. The region needs restraint and de-escalation. Actions that could further increase tensions should be avoided and any potential miscalculations prevented. Slovenia shares the collective responsibility to respond to crisis and humanitarian needs of affected populations when we do our best to help. As Minister said, we discussed in length also bilateral economic cooperation between our two countries. And allow me to say something about great cooperation between Slovenia and Egypt. Egypt is Slovenia's most important economic partner um, in your part of the world. And we have close economic ties. And there is great interest among Slovenian companies to strengthen cooperation in IT, electrical machinery, vehicles, energy, pharmaceutical components, green hydrogen, food and water, agriculture, health tourism, transport and logistics. And uh, Slovenia is also working on international development cooperation through many projects in Egypt, like recycling of Nile plastics in Kursai Island and project of economic and social empowerment of families to combat the worst forms of child labor through gender-friendly income generating activities. So I'm looking forward to new projects in coming years and continued cooperation and uh, I'm here at your disposal for further questions. Thank you. Shukran gazeelan. Anakhud su'aleen likul wazir. Questions for each ministry. Minister. Mr. Mohammed Nashat from Russia today. My question is to His Excellency, Minister Samah Shukri, you had called with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of France, U.S. and Britain over the past two days to discuss the developments and the latest escalation in Rafah, the Palestinian city. Can you tell us about the content of the Egyptian message you have submitted during these calls and if there is any development that reflect different reactions from the West regarding the military operations by Israel in Palestinian Rafah? Thank you. The purpose of the dialogue is to evaluate the course of events within the framework of the military intervention in Rafah and the importance of working closely with in order to prevent further development there is an international consensus consensus to refuse the expansion of military operation in Rafah or any operations or entering Rafah generally there have always been an international agreement on preventing this for its severe consequences and harmful effects for the Palestinians who are in this region. The message is that it's not just the dialogue or the oral dialogue, but there should be procedures, reactions, and effective procedures that achieve what we are calling for, which is the necessity to contain this matter and reach full ceasefire and to work on providing humanitarian aid within the current situation of closing Rafah, uh, a border crossing. Israel should bear the responsibility as an occupying state. It should provide the aid for the Palestinian people it's necessary to open Rafah uh, border crossing because large amount of aids are waiting to enter there from different countries. In addition to the great efforts exerted by the Egyptian Red Crescent and the Egyptian donations with the vital supplies to the Egyptian to the Palestinian people, the border crossing should be open again in order to enter these aids. We keep communicating with our international partners to call for this interference by the international community and to depend on the available mechanisms, either the Security Council, the UN General Assembly, or the bilateral relationships to support further dialogue and positions and policies that are announced with practical, physical procedures that achieve the result we seek for. Report من وكالة الأنباء السلوفينية. 
هذا السؤال للوزيرة الثانية فيون في الشهر الماضي رأينا قرارات من بديك بن لارجلي انسكسسفل سو وات ان يور اوبينيون شود ذا انترناشونال كوميونيتي دو تو ريزولف ذا كونفليكت ان غازا اند اولسو هاو كود سلوفينيانز سلوفينيانز ايفينشوال ريكوجنيشن اوف بالاستاين كونتريبيوت تو سولفينغ ذا كونفليكت ان غازا ثانك يو اتس اوكي اي ريبلاي ان انجلش اي بيليف ثانك يو فور ذا كويشنز You know, I was uh, visiting last week and also um, Israel and uh, Ramallah in attempts to talk with our counterparts how to ensure an immediate ceasefire and how to ensure that the agreement on release of hostages and uh, consideration of permanent ceasefire can be reached. In absence of any positive sign coming from Israeli government, also in my discussions there, we decided in uh, the government of Slovenia to launch the procedures for recognition of Palestinian statehood, meaning that we also want to see an impact on the ground with creating certain pressure. That means that we want to see that uh, there is a progress in the talks for the agreement in Cairo, for the ceasefire and the release of hostages, and also to see that the Palestinian authorities in Ramallah can rebuild trust and take also control over Gaza. So everything we can do to ensure that there is a ceasefire, that there is additional humanitarian assistance to prevent further escalation in Rafah and reopening of border crossings and serious discussion about the further political architecture, meaning two-state solution to seriously implement it with a purpose of living in security and peace, Israelis and Palestinians side by side. The situation is deteriorating. What we are seeing is what I said before, famine and starvation as additional tool of war that is unacceptable. There is generation of children without having any food, without having any infrastructure or schools or medicine or water. And this is something that will seriously have consequences also in the long run. I visited yesterday a hospital in Alarish, the Department of Children, and I have said that it's shocking to see the kids that lost their freedom and most probably lost their life and vision for the future. Thank you. Uh, this is Ahmad Mahran from Sky News. Mahran from Sky News. Excellency Samah Shukri, since Israel took over the Palestinian side of Rafah crossing, border crossing, media kept analyzing and explaining this escalation step and its consequences on the peace agreement between Egypt and Israel. Does Egypt consider the Israeli escalation in Rafah is a violation to the peace agreement and what are the Egyptian response options to this escalation step and to which extent the latest development in Rafah affect the Egyptian role in the mediation between the two sides, Israeli and Palestinian sides? The peace agreement between Egypt and Israel is a strategic option taken by Egypt more than four decades ago. It's the main pillar in the region to achieve peace and security. This agreement has its mechanisms to be activated or enabled to tackle any violations that have taken place. It has mechanisms to handle these violations, if any. This is done within a technical framework, within the framework of the military liaison committee. And we keep handling the agreement from this perspective as for. The second part of your question, Egypt always works on containing this crisis in order to reach to immediate ceasefire and release of hostage and we exerted lots of effort with the United States and Qatar months ago. 
Unfortunately, these efforts so far haven't succeeded yet. However, this is not an indicator to avoid providing support to the parties in order to achieve this goal because it's vital to protect the Palestinian people. The work is not only for the current situation in Gaza, but it's for the up later on within the framework of political this position towards the two-state solution and the establishment of the Palestinian state, of course, we'll keep continuing exerting efforts with other partners, but there should be a political will that would achieve a result in this regard. We call upon everyone to go through these negotiations with flexibility in order to reach ceasefire because the humanitarian situation is unbearable and the physical damage is shocking. The amount of damaging and the loss of life shouldn't continue this way. The parties should reach an agreement. There are moderate propositions that fulfill the needs of both sides. These proposals should be agreed upon so a truce can be reached in addition to exchange of hostages and handling the tough humanitarian situation to prevent also any kind of continued displacement that may liquidate the Palestinian cause and the Palestinian people from their lands. The Palestinian people are careful about this. Thank you. Mr. Mohammed Hageb from Al Ahram newspaper. Slovenia. في فبراير الماضي زار معالي الوزير سامح شكري سلوفينيا مستر سامح شكري كام تو سلوفينيا اند بارتيسيبيتد ان ذا ايكونوميك كوميتي ميتينجز ان بوث فور بوث كانتريز كان يو تيل اس اباوت ذا ريفلكشنز اوف ذيس فيزيت بيتوين سلوفينيا اند ايجيبت وات از ذا ريفلكشن اوف ذيس فيزيت اند اتس امبورتنس ان ذا ايكونوميك اند تريد كوبريشن فيلدز انذر بوينت ريجاردينج ذا investment conference to be held between Egypt and the European Union in next month. We'd like to know Slovenia's vision to this conference and its importance and the Slovenian company's readiness to participate in. Thank you. Thank you very much first on the conference in Cairo end of June. I think it's a great opportunity for the um, boosting investments and cooperation so I said to Minister Shukri that I will encourage Slovenian companies to attend the business conference um, in Cairo. Uh, there is a great potential between our two countries and on the recent February Economic uh, Committee we discussed how to improve our cooperation in the fields I mentioned, agriculture, artificial intelligence, hydrogen, renewables. Um, there is quite um, some agreements on the table that are in the pipeline to finalize. Um, there has been some decline in the trade, but it's good to note that there is a growing interest to boost, to boost our economic cooperation. And not only business and economic cooperation, but also tourism. Tourism is something that uh, Egypt is a um, very um, popular destination also for Slovenian tourists. The same goes that we would like to attract um, tourists to our country, that is um, very rich by forest, nature, water, clean air and uh, recreation. So we exchanged a lot of thoughts how to bring countries together, bring maybe some ideas on seasonal workers, on better air mobility, connectivity. So it's good to have regular visits. We agreed to have soon another economic uh, commission to see how to move ahead with the agreements and how to exchange our know-how on certain fields of cooperation and expertise where we can be best or in Egypt or in Slovenia.